Hey, 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 what's up and how's it going, everyone? Well, I'm so glad that you have took your time to spend with me right here today on the MRB Wrestling Review Show. I'm your co-host, Mike McRock-Wilson, and TNA Impact Wrestling just wrapped up on Thursday night, and the show kicked off when Dixie Carter came out to the ring and mentioned what happened last week when Hulk Hogan quit and... Uh, Carter mentioned how no one should be telling her how to run her company. And of course, out came Sting to address the character change with Dixie Carter. The only issue I have with Dixie Carter is that I think she needs to work on her acting. She's not very believable in her promos, but somehow something's working because the fans were really extra loud on the show. So with that being said, you know, Dixie Carter is actually doing something right. And when uh, Sting came out, you know, like I said, he addressed uh, what happened to you, Dixie, why the character change, why turn heel when you were faced for so long. And um, uh, I thought that, uh, that the Dixie Carter promo when she came out first was kind of going nowhere. So I think that's why Sting had to came out and save the day, you know, just for the sake of pro progressing the, the show forward. And um, what happened was, was that Dixie made a match and also planting ideas about Sting and his contract. Um, it could lead to Sting not being involved with TNA anymore. I mean, he's been there, done that. Uh, for uh, TNA, so I think you know if the pos if the possibility, the opportunity is there for Sting to um, go off TNA for a while and hype up a match against the Undertaker at WrestleMania 30 for the WWE. I'm all well and good for that. It's just that the um, uh, you know this idea of planting it too soon. Is probably the wrong approach. I think if Sting were to leave TNA, it should be a time where WrestleMania is only just a couple of months away, and it's only uh, October yet. So I like to see Sting still with the company, only for a bit, just to see him go off and then do his thing with the Undertaker. If that's the direction the WWE may go, but I'm going off topic now. This is TNA Impact Wrestling, and the first match on the card was Jeff Hardy versus Austin Aries, and I thought this match was actually really good. I, I think, you know, these two guys really performed well. Those two really uh, gave the raw, uh, and not only that, uh, it really made me look forward to seeing this four-way for the X Division Championship in an Ultimate X match. And uh, with that being said, what happened after Austin Aries won was that Samoa Joe came out to the ring and mentioned that he will be uh, inserting himself into the um, Ultimate X match at Bound for Glory for the X Division Championship. Yeah, I'm 50-50 split on this. I, I like that uh, Samoa Joe... You know, I, I like how they're making this an all-star match. I'm well and good for that. You know, I, I don't mind it. The only problem I have with it is that I feel like the match is already spoiled. It's almost like there's just a little bit too much X-Division star power because Samoa Joe is a guy that started the X-Division. And we kind of really... Samoa Joe really don't need to be in that match because he's a guy that probably won't win the match anyway. I think he, she, he will be in there just to um, make the other guys look good like uh, Manic and Chris Saban and Jeff Hardy and Austin Aries. And taking all that into account, I for Samoa Joe to be in, in an Ultimate X match, just the thought of picturing in my head of him climbing up on those cables and grabbing the title it's almost like you know I, I see him do that but then just break you know the the cables because you know he is a, a super heavyweight and uh, even though I think you know these cables are gonna hold a lot of weight 
I can't really see big guys going into this match thinking, you know, what my strategy is going to be because, you know, I'm not the fastest guy in this match. I think that this match really should be left up to, you know, the smaller guys that can really go high flyer, high octane uh, action. And uh, I like that, you know, they really... Uh, you know, is stepped aside from that old format we had with the with the triple threats, and now it's become this money in the bank uh, ripoff from the WWE having uh, uh, it booked as an All Stars match because it's an X Division titles on the line where you can cash it in to face the world champ, whoever it may be. Uh, I feel like you know TNA is ripping off. To WWE only a little bit, even though there's differences in this, you know, uh, concept with the exhibition championship. It just feels like that they are really taking their uh, matches and just making it look similar to the other company. Also, last night we saw the Bromans in the ring challenging ODB. I found a plot hole in this uh, little uh, story. First off, we saw Jesse and uh, Robbie E backstage and they talk about what happened last week when Robbie E got pinned by both uh, Joseph Park and uh, Eric Young in like five seconds of a match. And then he mentioned about Jesse being pinned by a woman, ODB. And then, you know, Jesse says, we got a big problem. Let's go deal with it in the ring. And Robbie E says, so what's the problem? Who are you challenging? Who's it going to be? And then we saw Eric Young and Joseph Park uh, out in a car about to go on a road trip when he only gets so far and then stops, gets out of the car, and Eric Young says, "I wait, I forgot, ODB has a match. And here I'm thinking, how did Eric Young know that ODB was going to have a match before Jesse laid out the challenge to ODB when Robbie E didn't know who it was going to be. No one knew who it was going to be, you know, uh, after that backstage segment. So how did Eric Young know that ODB was going to face Jesse in a match? It's uh, just a little nitpicking plot hole moment. Uh, just for you to think about <laughs> and with that being said what happened was was that the match went into a no contest when Lady Tapa came out and just destroyed the knockouts champion ODB here's the the only issue I have with Lady Tapa coming out uh, attacking ODB is that I feel like it's way too soon for Lady Tapa to be, you know, put in the match with only B for the Nekos Championship. When Bad for Glory is only two weeks away. And then shortly after that we have a number one contenders match that was supposed to happen last week. Which got interrupted by Lady Tapa. So I guess they say try it again. You might as well because Lady Tapa, I feel like it's very, very soon for her to be in a match. Much less a debut match. For an Echoes Championship and ODB, let her character build up slowly by doing these attacks and then later on going into matches as well, you know, and teasing, you know, just some short matches and going into longer matches. That, I hope, that's what happens for Lady Tapa. So I like that they had to have this number one contenders match again. It was Brooke uh, versus Velvet Sky. And uh, we understand that Gail Kim will be involved in this match as well. And the only issue I have with that is that we don't even see Gail Kim on the show. And she's been inserted into a Knuckles Championship match. I thought that's a little very ridiculous. Uh, Gail Kim is uh, probably one of the best knockouts. The best knockout on any roster, on any wrestling company. And to not have her on the show when you put her in a knockout championship match at Bound for Glory just sucks the life out of TNA. And um, even though we saw Velvet Sky and Brooke, you know, go in this match, 
We saw Chris Saban come out with Velvet as well. Chris Saban making the match about him. And um, I think that there is more focus on, you know, the couple of Chris Saban and Velvet Sky than the actual match that's happening. And, the, and it sucks. The momentum of the knockouts division is, is really declining. And it hasn't been the same since years ago on TNA. And uh, I think that um, uh, Brooke Tesmacher, I don't feel like she should be involved in a Nekos Championship match when there's a write-off story involving the Aces and Eights. Maybe the idea for it is to have Bully Ray lose to tell the Bound for Glory and for Brooke to become the Nekos Champ because you can't have, you know, like a power couple be two champs it's never been done and it probably won't be done anyway so I think that uh, what may happen is that um, ODB or Gail Kim uh, I'd say ODB retains but I will do a prediction video in just a, in uh, just a week there's only one more impact wrestling left we'll see what happens next week in the knockouts division hopefully Gail Kim will be on next week because if not I won't be invested in this Nekos championship match at all. Also we saw the first ever member of the Ego Hall of Fame Bobby Roode and all I have to say about this segment is that it was gold like just shiny gold. Uh, Daniels and Kez looking ridiculously hilarious in those outfits and it suits them well see what I've done there and um, even the little things in that promo well with them introducing Bobby Roode was just absolutely hilarious and uh, the uh, and, and the stuff they said the stuff they mentioned the things that were in the ring yeah I, I see the chair there and I was thinking that this chair looks like something from the 1800s that was like locked up in in a dungeon with dust all over it and was cleaned up and was put in the ring. That's that's what I was thinking watching that segment uh, play out. And uh, what I really like is that you know there's um, you know a good build up to a possible match that I w was mentioning about last week on my review of TNA. And it's going to happen. Well, what happened was was that uh, Kurt Angle interrupted the Hall of Fame speech from Bobby Roode when Bobby Roode mentioned Kurt Angle about him being in the Hall of Fame, saying it was ridiculous and what have you done for me lately, etc., etc. Out he comes and challenges Bobby Roode to a match at Bound for Glory. I think that's all you need. Game, match, set. There's your hype. Bobby Roode will face Kurt Angle in 10 days at Bound for Glory. And uh, another few things I should mention throughout that segment. I really like that tribute video when they dubbed uh, words into Superstar's voices. I thought that was that little thing was tremendous. As well as, you know, the knockouts uh, saying all these sexy kind of words in a way where it's, you know, not really, where they're not really talking about Bobby Roode, they're probably talking about something else. And I like how cause, uh, Kaz, uh, if it was Kaz, made that video, it, it looked like he did because that video was just ridiculous as he is, in a really good way. And that whole segment throughout, I was laughing my head off. I thought that was really, really entertaining, to say the very least. And then shortly after um, that, you know, we saw that Knuckles match. And then we saw Daniels and Kaz again. Uh, they were involved in a tag team match against Sting and Magnus. And um, really all Christopher Daniels and Kaz were doing uh, for this match was being the supporting roles for this match going into Bound for Glory between Magnus and Sting. And what happened throughout this match was that there was a little bit of miscommunication in the beginning between Magnus and Sting. And then later on when uh, Sting uh, 
tags himself in the match and gaining the victory for the team. And uh, Magnus having that look of, I had the match won, when really uh, he uh, had had the match won, but never really um, uh, took advantage of it because you're involved in a tag team match. I thought that was a little ridiculous. It was kind of a real rookie mistake on the part of Magnus because what happened was was that Magnus, after Magnus delivered the elbow drop, uh, he kind of, you know, you know, was hyping up the crowd and then going for the Texas Cloverleaf when I seen the other guy come to and I thought it was ridiculous for him to not capitalize on that and go for the pin. Instead, he goes for the submission. Hello, you're in a tag team match. The other guy's going to come in and um, interfere and look what happened. He did. And that's what caused, you know, the uh, bang this, the match. He wanted that match to be about him gaining the victory over bad influence. Instead, it was uh, Sting whom prob Magnus probably thought he was taking the spotlight away from him uh, based on what happened the week before when um, Sting was going to give Magnus a chance. So he thinks there's hope that um, Sting is going to hand him the spotlight. And then the week later, on tonight's show, Sting takes it away from Magnus. That's what Magnus probably felt. And I like how he sold his emotions in that whole uh, situation causing a little bit of friction between Sting and Magnus and I think going forward next week in at Bat for Glory I think this will probably be a sleeper I think um, that this match may turn out to be a sleeper and what else happened we saw backstage uh, before I get to the main event was uh, AJ Styles and um, Aces and Eights, we saw, you know, Bully Ray come in, he talks about a revenge match, we see him backstage with his group, Knox and uh, Garrett Bischoff, and he tells them to take out AJ Styles, do his dirty work for him, and uh, when we got to the main event match, it was uh, Knox and Bischoff, of course, against AJ Styles in a handicap match, and uh, we see Bully Ray uh, uh, come out as well, and, uh, uh, take Mike Tanay off the uh, announce table and it's just him and Taz I like that because we may see a split between those two eventually so I like that this is probably you know the last time you'll see Bully Ray and Taz talking with each other on the announce booth because maybe the week later they'll probably have a split where Taz goes off or any of the 8s and 8s would make sense anyway and with that being said, I like how at the end of this match, you know, there's more focus on the Bully Ray and AJ Styles match going into Battle for Glory as opposed to the sub-story of the Aces and Nate split because, uh, you know, there should be more focus on the match that the actual guys are actually in the match. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I think that was a smart move on the part of TNA. What happened was that AJ Styles overcame the odds in that handicap match and got the victory over uh, Knox and Bischoff. And um, before this match took place, we saw AJ Styles and Dixie Carter backstage, and they talk uh, and they were talking about you know uh, it, Dixie Carter gives him a check, tells him you could buy a lot of stuff with it. AJ Styles rips off the check and says he's not for sale. You know, so that idea of maybe a screw job finish could happen at Bat for Glory. Who knows yet? We'll see what happens. And um, what happened at the end of the night was that Bully Ray attacks AJ Styles after the match with a chain. While the other two guys watch, so I thought that was a little interesting as well, because next week something could play out where there's going to be a split involved, as well as the story meshed in with AJ Styles and Bully Ray. And I think that, you know, they're juggling these two stories pretty well and not, you know, really confusing the audience as opposed to, okay, are we going to see a split or are we going to see a momentum shift? 
what happened was it was a, it was a momentum shift where Bully Ray has the momentum on the second last episode of TNA going into Bound for Glory. Now, if AJ Styles has momentum on next week's show, odds are that Bully Ray might be uh, retain his championship at Bound for Glory. But sometimes, you know, they'll they can always take a swerve of that. They're not the WWE, you know, they do stuff that are not cliched uh, in the obvious directions, like the WWE does. So with that being said, I think either way that they're going to go with the story with Bully Ray and AJ and the sub-story with the Ace and Nate split up will go in directions will probably be obvious and predictable, but it will make sense hopefully, uh, that the way that they work it out. And there you have it. Next week is the final show before Bound for Glory, and there will be a one-hour pre-show on Spike TV. And at Bound for Glory, we'll see the main event, Bully Ray versus AJ Styles for the World Heavyweight Championship. We'll also see Sting versus Magnus and Bobby Roode Versus Kurt Angle. And there's other the matches on the card as well. That you will that you could probably go to the website to see what they are. I, I know there's a um, gauntlet match uh, before Bound for Glory. So I think, you know, uh, that um, that'll be interesting to see. And then they'll face the uh, tag team champs, uh, James Storm and Gunner. Which uh, kind of sucks for the tag team division. That's really derailed. But hopefully there's hope for the tag team division yet on TNA. And there you have it. That was my for my review of TNA Impact Wrestling for the MRB Wrestling Review Show. I am Mike McRock Wilson. Get plenty of rest and always do your best.